Hey folks, this is Pastor Carl Gallops, and I'm live with Messianic Rabbi Zev Parat from Tel Aviv, Israel on this April the 15th, 2020. Zev, it's good to have you with us today. It's great to be here, uh, Carl. An honor and a blessing as always. Well, it's our honor, our blessing, and I know that uh, that our audience is going to love what you're going to bring today because it comes right out of Israeli news, and uh, what you're going to talk about has to do with a specific, very, very famous rabbi who just died. The media is reporting it. It was in relation to COVID-19 complications, and you're going to explain that. You're going to explain how the funeral went from something that could have been huge down to this tiny little number number of people that showed up, but you're going to explain to us the supernatural that's behind all of this because you had a chance to witness to this rabbi some time back, and you're going to share with us something that was shared at the funeral that just kind of just brought it alive in your spirit, what this rabbi was doing, perhaps, and um, I, I can't wait for the folks to hear it. So I'm going to hush and let you tell the story of this famous rabbi that just passed and the supernatural that's connected to it. Go ahead. Zef. Rabbi Eliyahu Doran Bakshi was the former chief rabbi of Israel, together with uh, Rabbi Lau. Those of you who uh, have read my testimony in Messiah of Israel Ministries.org, you know that I was connected with Rabbi Lau uh, very much, and therefore, through Rabbi Lau, I was able to minister to Rabbi Doran Bakshi. He passed away a few days ago from the COVID 19. He arrived to the hospital, and within four or five days, the rabbi passed away. When he passed away, he uh, left uh, instruction in his, in his funeral to read Psalms 18, verse 2. But I want to back up a little bit, because in 2017, this particular rabbi went through a very, very difficult time in Israel. He was uh, convicted of some kind of a crime where they tried to convict him, they tried to indict him. He was going through a very difficult time in 2017. And this is when I had the opportunity, through my relationship with Rabbi Israel Lau, to minister to Rabbi Doran Bakshi, and had uh, several meetings with him one-on-one, -on -one, but later on many meetings on the Internet because of his position. It's very, very difficult for him to meet, very uh, jeopardizing his reputation. We did a lot of meetings on GoToMeeting and other links that he sent me, preaching the gospel to him. Rabbi Doran Bakshi never denied Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus. On the contrary, he was very touched that in 2017 I reached out to him when everybody else was uh, against him, and I shared the love of Jesus with him, and I think it really touched him. The Holy Spirit really touched him. So we go to his funeral. Number one, uh, he uh, was a, a big rabbi uh, known in, here in Israel, uh, kind of like Rabbi Yitzhak Aduri, maybe a little bit smaller. Uh, at least two or 300,000 people would have attended his funeral, but the, because of the COVID-19 and the restrictions of the Israeli government and uh, the Israeli Health Department, it limited to 20 or 25 people of some main rabbis in that, in that funeral. However, the funeral was televised to all Israel, so over 8 million people watched the funeral. That's way more that would have been there if the cameras would not have been in that funeral. And in the funeral, the rabbi reads instructions that he left. Watch the instructions. I don't want you to read from the rabbinic traditional book. I want you to read Psalms. And he quotes Psalms 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortune, my deliverer, and, 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 and he quoted Psalms 18, excuse me, verses 18, verse 16. That's what he quoted. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. Now that, first of all, it's huge that a rabbi would quote the Psalms, but he was saying something. Because if we look at the context of Psalms 18, we'll go back to Psalms 18, verse 2, it reads like this, the Lord is my rock, my fortune, my deliverer, my God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. What's the word for salvation in Hebrew? It's Jesus, Yeshua. So he was preaching the gospel. He chose Psalms 18, verse 16, in order for people to go and read the whole context of what, it, what is this speaking about. It's speaking about Yeshua. So the rabbi was actually preaching the gospel, we don't know if he believed in Yeshua, he didn't quote, but everything, my relationship with him, the fact that he did what he did, the Bible verse that he quoted here indicates that this rabbi, like Rabbi Yitzhak Aduri, believed that Yeshua is the Messiah, 
several months ago, four or five months ago, before he passed away, well, we didn't know he was going to pass away, but before he passed away, I had the opportunity to give him the book that you and I wrote, The Rabbi, The Secret Message, and The Identity of the Messiah. We don't know these four months by him reading the, the book and understanding the revelation of Rabbi Yitzhak Adori, how much that triggered him to the Word of God as well. But we give uh, Jesus all the glory for your listeners that are listening to this and saying, okay, so a rabbi read the Psalms, what's the big deal? It is a huge deal that a rabbi in his position would jeopardize his own reputation by telling them, guys, don't read from the rabbinic book. I want you to read from the Psalms. And with Psalms, the Psalms that point to Yeshua HaMashiach. That is huge. That is absolutely amazing. So right now I've got the picture up for our uh, listeners about the rabbi, the secret message, and the identity of Messiah. And you're right. That's the story of Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri, who basically did something very similar that this rabbi did, except that uh, Rabbi Kaduri left a note in his own handwriting saying that Jesus is Messiah. And this rabbi uh, that, that you were just speaking of, that just passed away the other day, left instructions, and you said it's unusual for a rabbi to have the Psalms quoted, rather usually at the funerals they have prayer books quoted. Speak about that just a little bit. And I'm not saying that they didn't quote prayer books. We need to understand, first of all, that there are rabbis there that don't believe in Yeshua, so I'm sure they did that, but they had to uh, abide in what he said. It was kind of like a decree of a king. Think about that. The king decreed. He was like a king, right? He decreed, you must read the Psalms in my funeral, so they had to do it. And without even realizing it, they were preaching the gospel to millions on television. When a rabbi, rabbis read books from, they read interpretations of books, they read other rabbinic books, they read the Talmud, they read the Zohar, they read the prayer book. They don't necessarily read direct from the Psalms in relation to, especially in a funeral or in a marriage. They don't do that. Yeah. So this is huge. And the fact that he did it is going to open many doors here in Israel because people are going to begin to ask, why did he do it? And even if they don't ask, we're going to ask them why he did it. That's right. And they're going to and, and they're going to, and they're going to start thinking, and then it's going to open the door for the gospel of Jesus Yeshua. Now, people like to ask, even in the book, the Rabbi, the Secret Message, and the Identity of the Messiah, the story of Yitzhak Adori, they like to ask, okay, why didn't the rabbi just go out and say Jesus is the Messiah, and that's it? Does anybody believe that if Rabbi Kaduri would write Yeshua as the Messiah, it would ever reach the media? Right. Or it would be demolished. It would never reach the media. Does anybody believe that if this rabbi would say, please read the Psalms because the Psalms is going to tell you who the Messiah is, they're not going to read the Psalms, decree or no decree. Right. They wouldn't do it. But he did it in a brilliant way because the hand of Yeshua was upon it. And this is huge. In the midst of the COVID-19, the Bible says God is going to take the evil and turn it into good. He's taking the evil of this COVID-19 and turning it into good to accomplish what now is being done, the saving of many lives. Yeah, that is absolutely powerful. That is supernatural. And Thank you so much for this live report, uh, Rabbi Zev. We're going to have to go right now. Hope to have you back on again soon, but thank you for taking time out. I know at the time that we're doing this, it's uh, getting on in the evening uh, there in Tel Aviv, but, uh, but, but we thank you immensely. God bless you, Rabbi Zev. God bless you. Thank you. And let's continue to stand together in prayer uh, because uh, we are getting closer to the second coming of Jesus. We are. We're living in the most prophetic time since the first coming of Jesus. And, uh, and I'm proud to be a part of ministry with you, my brother. Well, folks, that'll be it for this particular, um, uh, for this particular interview and report. But we'll be back with you as soon as news breaks, especially in Israel. Uh, Rabbi Zev and I will be here with, it, with you. And uh, so thanks for listening. God bless you. Have a wonderful Jesus-filled day.